And here we are back for part two of our lecture on art theft. We were just talking about Hitler and how he labeled modern art and artists as degenerate, which means having lost the physical, mental, or moral qualities considered to be normal and desirable, that the artwork that these artists were producing showed evidence of decline. And this is really like famous artworks today that we wouldn't think twice about enjoying, such as Impressionist works and Cubist works. Impressionists, Surrealists, and Dadaists. These were all labeled as degenerate art. Now, Hitler hated the Dadaists the most. He called them, quote, insane and depraved humans. Now, this is also some of the most famous artists of the late 19th and early 20th century. People like Pizarro and Monk, Kandinsky, Medigliani, Chagall, Brock, Legere, Maison, Beckman, and even our friend Pablo Picasso all labeled as degenerate artists. And no one was really, no one could really escape from Hitler's wrath. An artist like this was a German expressionist artist, Emil Nold, uh, produced this work called Prophet. Emil Nold was a fervent member of the Nazi party, yet Hitler tells him to stop producing art because he's an expressionist. Teachers such as Paul Klee, who taught at the Bauhaus, one of the most important schools of art in Germany, removed from their teaching post. Now, in 1937, Hitler signs what's going to be labeled as the Degenerate Art Act. Now, this allows Nazi troops to go into Germany's state museums to quote-unquote cleanse them of works that Hitler deems as poisonous. Museums really don't have a choice. They're ordered to relinquish their collections, and they do. In a matter of just a couple of weeks, over 16,000 artworks are taken because of this Degenerate Art Act. They're taken up to Switzerland and sold at auction, such uh, works such as this one by Kirchner, or the self-portrait of Van Gogh. This work sold at that auction for about $40,000. If you run that forward to today's dollars, that's about half a million dollars. And the funds benefited the Third Reich. Matisse's Bathers with Turtle also sold at that auction. This time, uh, this work is sold to Joseph Pulitzer Jr. And he buys it and he tells his friends that he wants to save this work from an uncertain future and he may have very well saved it from destruction. Um, after the war, he would go on to donate it to the St. Louis Art Museum. But those were some of the lucky works of art. Out of the 16,000 works at that auction, only 11,000 sold. The other 5,000, they were, like this painting, burned. Now, just like Napoleon, Hitler also had kind of a reasoning behind what he was doing. First of all, he wanted to rid the world of bad art. And again, it's something that doesn't sound so horrible. We don't want to see bad art, but we also don't want it to be decided upon by somebody else what is or is not bad art. Step two of Hitler's plan is really just as nefarious. It's to collect Europe's finest art treasures. And what he would do is he would steal art, first from the German Jewish families, and then once Austria was annexed to Germany, he would steal art from the German Jewish families. And that's the way this painting came into his possession, or Nazi possession. This is a really famous work, Portrait of Adele Blockbauer. Sometimes it's called the Austrian Mona Lisa. And it's by the artist Gustav Klimt, who is really Austria's most famous artist. And I think there's only about 13 or so of his works still remaining in the world. Now, in 1909, uh, this painting is completed. And Adele Blockbauer, who you see in the painting itself, 
uh, owns this painting until her death in 1925. After that, ownership reverts to her husband, Ferdinand, and later when Austria is annexed to Germany, Ferdinand leaves Austria and goes up to Switzerland and will live the rest of his life in exile. He won't see the end of the war. Now, according to Adele's will, not only this painting, but the four other works that you see here, also done by Gustav Klimt, are to be given after their deaths to the National Museum in Austria. Now, that's exactly what happens once World War II ends. These paintings hang in the National Gallery for the next 70 years, 60, 65 years, something like that. And in the early 2000s, the family of Adele Blockbauer uh, bring a court case, and they sue the country of Austria, saying that they are the rightful owners of these paintings, that if Adele Blockbauer knew what kind of atrocities would happen during World War II, she would have never allowed these paintings to go to the country of Austria. And when I was working at the LA County Museum of Art, we had these five paintings as uh, an exhibition for a couple of months. They were making like this world tour and were stopping in Los Angeles. And, you know, for me, five paintings in a gallery at a museum, what's the big deal? And I knew these were important because when I went to go see them myself, as I, as an employee, I would go and see every exhibition that we had, um, there was a two-hour wait to get in. It, it was just an incredible line. I remember it wrapping around the building twice. And so I decided to go on Wednesday because the museums closed that day. And if you're an employee, it's kind of like you have the museum to yourself. So it's really great. And I walk into the exhibition room where this is, and a guard tells me to get out. And this is not just a museum guard. This is a hired guard, fully dressed in attire, gun at his side, and I went ahead and left. Um, the At that point, it was really, okay, these are extremely significant paintings. I ended up seeing them a couple weeks later, and, you know, I didn't really know the story of these paintings at that time, how important they were, and really their history or provenance. So, in a landmark court ruling, came down around 2007, the family gets these paintings back. And for the few months that these were at LACMA, um, I heard the daughter, or not the daughter, she's actually the niece, Maria Altman, uh, tell me in this video that was playing at the beginning of the exhibition that I had to walk by every day about how these were her family's heritage, that she remembers going to Aunt Adele's house and seeing this painting and having, you know, lunch basically at the table that this was behind. And, you know, it was very heartwarming and, and uh, it was just a, you know, a great story. And the family does get these paintings back, uh, but let me show you what they do with them at that point. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Christie's, and it's our privilege to have you here on what for us is a very special privilege to introduce to you um, a very special lady, and I choose my term carefully, uh, Maria Altman, uh, who is the niece of the late Ferdinand and Adela Blockbauer. And one of them remains in public collection. Exactly. Why are you telling us that you have a private collection? I'm not the only one. I had four poor heirs. We would very much like to see the paintings for the rest of the time in public view. So our hope will be that that is in the second while of them. On 51, the 28th million dollars. Thank you, Madam, 28, 29. 
29 million with Ken now, and 20, 30 million, you'll see Spiller, and 32 million dollars. 33 million at 36 million dollars, all down and selling right at 36 million dollars. Mark, your bidder at 36 million. 1728, thank you. On 52, landscape there, lot 52, in this case $10 million starting. Still up front against you here and selling this time, all done at $28 million. For you, madam, $28 million. Third glimpse, apple tree number one, saying on the screen again, far right, 1912, showing here and is illustrated there in your catalogue. $4,500,000. million, $25 million. $25 million is commerce now, $29 million, five. Selling this time for twenty-nine million five hundred. Not fifty-four. Four flip there, supporting the reverse lock power two. Showing again on the screen far right and is illustrated in your catalog, nineteen twelve portrait. And in this case, twenty-five million dollars starting at twenty-five million now. Fifty-seven million five hundred thousand. Mr. Federer, fifty-eight million. Four million five hundred thousand. Fifty-five million. This telephone, fair warning. Guy, your bidder at seventy-eight million dollars. So some pretty incredible amounts of money that these paintings were going for. Unfortunately, museums didn't buy them. They didn't have enough money. They went to private collectors. This painting of Adele, um, $135 million. It was the most amount of money ever paid for a painting uh, at that time. And uh, today we've surpassed that, um, but it's still like the sixth or seventh overall for the most amount of money ever paid for an artwork such as this. Um, the person who bought it was Ben Lauder. He's part of the Estee Lauder family and Fortune. Uh, for a while, he had it hanging in his living room. Today it is on public display, which is great, but it also opens up a lot of doors to start thinking about who really owns art? Should art be available to everyone? And especially with a painter and a painting as important as this, why did it fall into private hands? And the idea that this is really something that has a national pride to it. So it, it does open up a, a door to a lot of questions that uh, you can kind of answer for yourselves. Um, but anyway, uh, this is where I'm going to stop uh, this segment of the video, and we'll catch back uh, with part.